Hello, and welcome to episode 3 of C++ Weekly. I'm your host, Jason Turner. Once a week, we'll pick some topic of interest in C++ and dig into it with some live coding. In this episode, we are going to give an introduction to using the Clang Tidy tool. Now, if you're familiar with any of the tools that have been released by the Clang and LLVM projects for analysis of C++ code, you might have heard of Clang Modernize, which no longer exists. It has been replaced or merged into Clang Tidy, and Clang Check, which uh, also runs various code analysis has had most of its functionality merged into Clang Tidy as well. With Clang Tidy, we are able to run a extremely large set of static analyses on our projects. And I will show you what some of those static analyses are today by showing you how they can be executed against my project ChaiScript. And I will show you some of the uh, pitfalls potentially in using Clang Tidy if you are not careful. So the first resource that you will need today is to make sure that you have the latest version of Clang installed. And one reason I'm doing this episode right now is because Clang 3.8 was recently released. So you can, if you are running Ubuntu, I personally have 15.10 installed can run this command. Add repository. Now I already have the repository added, so I expect to get some kind of an error. I didn't. And then after that, you would need to do a, an update. But also, it is important to notice that you will have a signature key signature error if you don't already have the appropriate repository key added. So we can do that. And then we can update our repository sources. And since I already have Clang 3.8 installed, don't expect to see anything really interesting happen here. But the next would be to install Clang Tidy 3.8. There, nothing needed to happen. OK, so now that we have Clang 3.8 installed, we now need to give it some input to run our static analysis. So we're going to make a quick temporary builder here. Now the easiest way to run Cling Tidy is it, it well first of all it requires this thing it says a build path used to read a compile command database the compile command database is a json file that contains all of the compile commands that you need to actually build your project and then tools like cling tidy and cling check and cling modernize use that um, compile command file to determine exactly what compiler flags it needs to be executing to look at your source code and which files that can possibly be built. So as you can see here, it says the easiest way to do it is with a CMake command and turn on export compile commands. So we'll do just that. And just for completeness sake here, I'm going to make it explicit that 
I'm going to want to use the same flags that I would use if I were calling Clang. Okay, now that we've successfully run CMake, we can see that there is this compile commands dot JSON. And it has each of the targets that would be built by the project listed out and what command should be executed. Now to get into it, we can tell Clang Tidy that we want to use our current directory as our build directory to find the build commands in. We notice it didn't actually do any output for us, and why not? The answer is because we didn't tell it what source file we want it to analyze. So we have our compile command database set up. Now we need to say that we want to look at main.cpp. So it's going to run its analysis against ChaiScript's main.cpp. And ChaiScript is a header-only library, so it's going to do the analysis of the C++ file and probably find a few things for it to complain about because um, it can run a lot of checks. Now we notice, next issue, so that it didn't actually run any tests or didn't give us any warnings because we didn't tell it which checks we want enabled. So let's turn on all checks. I believe that error is coming just from the fish command shell. So as it runs, we should start seeing, okay, that's, let's get out of fish in case it's getting in our way. I thought it would be helpful for this example. Okay, so it's taking much longer to run this time, so presumably it is actually executing all of the tests as expected. There we go. So now we're getting... Uh, all kinds of information back where it's telling us about array bounds, security warnings, and issues in the system headers. So that's a minor problem. but it's not telling us about any issues that are in our headers. And since ChaiScript is, as I said, a header-only library, it's pretty important for us to get back the warnings from our headers. Okay, let's see what we have now. 
still many warnings from the system headers, but some more interesting things, hopefully. So we have some readability concerns that the compiler is bringing up because we are doing things like returning after an else statement and some things where we are doing pointer arithmetic that go against the core guidelines. And then also some interesting things like this, which tells us that our namespace is not closed with a comment. And I find that pretty fascinating. Um, it is definitely helps the code be more readable, but it's nothing that I've ever really personally concerned myself with when I've been programming. So now that we see all of these different possible fixes that it might, or errors that it might have, we can actually ask Clang to automatically fix them for us. And so we can see that it actually did a bunch of different transformations of our code for us. For instance, this complaint that it made about returning outside in an else block. Here it just removes the else block. It also has some um, header reorder rules that I'm not quite clear on. And it does things like explicitly states method uh, parameters as being unused, adds the comments to namespaces, marks things as override instead of virtual. That is smart of it. And on and on, it can automatically do things like apply equals default. Some uh, very handy things, although you cannot fully trust it. As you can see here, I don't know what it thought it was doing on this particular line of code. So you have to take some of these changes with a grain of salt. This one I like automatically puts braces around your if block body, but it doesn't properly line them up like you might expect it to. And I also noticed when I was playing with this earlier that if you are to give it let's see If you were to give it multiple files at once for it to run its analysis on, which is a perfectly legitimate thing to do, you can run into a problem with the fix command. Okay, the analysis is finished running. If you are working on a primarily header only library like I am, it's important to note that you have to give it C++ files that are build targets in your build database. You can't give it the header files that you want it to analyze. So we ran our two main CPP files, our main.cpp and our standard library CPP, with all checks and automatically applying fixes at the same time against ChiScript. Let's see what it did. We can see that Clang Tidy gets a little confused and tries to apply both of the transformation sets at the same time. So we end up with duplicated and reordered header files that are on top of each other and namespace comments that are duplicated and things just don't work very well at all from there. I really wouldn't expect the code to compile. As you can see here, this really doesn't make any sense at all. So be careful 
if you're running against multiple CVV files to not automatically apply the fixes. And if you are going to automatically apply the fixes, be sure that you look them over yourself. So one last comment before we wrap this up is that you can list checks. So I am running against all checks for everything. And now I don't necessarily care about Google's standards. So I might disable those. And I might not necessarily care about OSX standards if they apply to any of this code. So pick and choose which fixes, which checks you want to run and run them against your code. And hopefully you'll find some useful things. I know that I have when I've run static analyzers against ChaiScript. They've never been a waste of time. I have always found something interesting to look at. And it is rare that I have false positives. The only false positive that I've seen with Clang Tidy 3.8 is thinking that I'm doing pointer arithmetic when I'm actually, in one particular case, accessing the array index operator. So I am going to edit out some of the pauses that were in this video, so don't expect Clang Tidy to run as fast for you as it will appear to have run while I edit out the blanks. And as always, let me know if there's anything that you would like to see different in the colors or style of this video. Thank you.